Do you remember the moment you realized that the world had changed? Let me tell you a quick little story that has nothing and everything to do with the future of our world and how you fit into it. In 1917, the United States faced a huge problem. They were working hard to compete in the industrialized economy, and there was a shortage. Not a shortage of oil or coal or other natural resources, a shortage of people, specifically obedient factory workers. The solution to this economic dilemma? It was an experiment of sorts. It hadn't been done before until someone thought of it. Mandatory public school. Unfortunately, the initial purpose of the United States public school system was not to inspire children or generate scholars. And it wasn't created for dreamers, people who color outside the lines, break the rules, and challenge the status quo. The public school system of the early 1900s was invented to create a nation full of adults who would obediently do their jobs in the factory assembly lines. Teaching kids to sit in straight rows and scheduling the entire day with the ringing of bells wasn't by chance. Punishing those who didn't conform was purposeful. These were the skills they would need to join the labor force. Intentional or not, this early method of turning dreamers into workers was an investment in the nation's economic future. And it worked. This then led to several generations of productive, fully employed workers. But it isn't working anymore. Why? Our economy has changed. We don't live in an industrialized economy anymore. We live in a connected economy. Right now, there are more users on Facebook than there were people on the planet 200 years ago. Technology has made it possible for us to connect with people, ideas, and information from anywhere in the world instantaneously. And as a result, our economies have expanded from localized towns and communities to the entire world. We have globalized trade in nearly every way. In the past, the obedient, do what you're told without question people were rewarded for working hard and putting their dreams aside in order to toe the line. They were given well-paying jobs that led to long-term careers. They were guaranteed pensions, benefits, and the promise that they would always be taken care of. And they were. But that promise is gone for most of us today. Even if you have a white-collar job, the majority of white-collar workers are still working in a factory. Instead of operating a sewing machine or welding a widget, they now push pencils, type on keyboards, or process paperwork. It's still factory work because the entire focus of the day is spent on increasing productivity, which leaves little room for creativity, spontaneity, or individuality. The educated, hard-working masses are still doing what they're told, but they're no longer getting what they deserve. Even if you do everything you are told to do today, graduate from high school, go to college, get a degree, work hard in whatever job you can find, if you're lucky enough to find one, you're not guaranteed anything. Companies are being forced to change or die right now. Layoffs happen much more often than job openings appear, and the highest paying jobs are disappearing or heading overseas at an alarming rate. If you have a job where your boss tells you exactly what to do, he or she will always find someone cheaper than you to do it. Did you know that the average length of a job today is about four and a half years? Contrast that to the 1960s when it was 40 years. The connected economy rewards a different group of people. It rewards the people who see things differently, who don't conform, people who have ideas that no one else has, people who are willing to work hard but know that the old way of doing things is broken. The connected economy rewards you not for being a cog in the wheel of life, but for standing up and reaching out. The connected economy rewards the connectors. Whether it's connecting a person to a person, a business to a business, a business to a product, or a product to a person, those who learn how to connect are the ones who will survive and excel in the connected economy. That is how the world has changed. It's not about to change, 
it already has. Things are different now, and they're not going back to the way they used to be. Look at Facebook. What's their product? It's you. Your network, your information, your ideas, they all have value. Does Facebook pay you for the money they make selling your information to advertisers? No. But we still use it because we have an innate desire to connect with people. In fact, neuroscientists have found that we are actually hardwired to connect with each other. Some people know how to leverage this innate ability in today's economy, but most don't. And because they don't know how to do it, most of them are paralyzed with fear, resisting the shift, despite clear indications telling them it's time to change. In 1917, a group of people performed an experiment that forever changed the way that we earned a living. The world today is facing another huge problem. We're facing a shortage of our own. Not a shortage of factory workers or consumers. The world has enough of those. We have a shortage today of dreamers and connectors. And so, we're holding our own little experiment. And you happen to be the subject of it. This eight-minute presentation was specifically designed to seek out and find the connectors around us. Those who recognize that we are on the brink of the next economic revolution, who are ready to thrive in the connected economy, and who are searching for the best way to do it. It's not too late to embrace the change and find a way to make yourself relevant and profitable in our brave new world. And that's why we've invited you here today. We've created something that rewards you for connecting. It pays you for bringing people together behind a cause, product, or idea. If you are passionate about helping people, if you are passionate about changing lives, if you want to position yourself to be a capitalizing force within the connected revolution instead of just a bystander, let's start now. Do you remember the moment you realized that the world had changed? How about the moment you realized you could change with it? Are you ready for the details?